see me in bits. Hey there, everybody. Welcome, once again. Oh, quiet, you. Welcome, once again, to this great little show you love watching that comes to you from deep within the bowels of downtown St. John's, Newfoundland, that beautiful historic little town in a secret undisclosed location we have for you tonight in the Library of Graphic Literature with your host, me, Wallace Ron. Whew! Another warm night. The warm weather is still holding out here on the East Coast. Ah, nothing like a sip of tea now, is there? Now, along with that sip of tea, whew, we have a lot of books to uh, go through with the hair tonight, so um, let's get right to it. Whew, man, it is warm here tonight. Uh, of course, this is Friday night rather than the usual Thursday night, but that was because, as you all know, living out here in this quiet little island hidden way out in the North Atlantic, Sometimes we don't get our comics, usually because of a holiday or if the ships aren't running because of high winds or high seas or if there's a snowstorm or ooh, black, who knows, right? Falcon infestation, any number of reasons. Uh, whale attack, you know, or uh, beer invasion by bears. Sometimes it happens. Yes. Or terrorist actions by moose. Always happens. Anyway, this week has been a good week for comics and for books. And I'm just so excited. I just can't get to it. I just can't get to it. I just can't get to it. Well, yes, I can. Okay, first off, here tonight. And this sending out to my buddy, Jason Lutz, who, of course, is responsible for the classic... Berlin, doom, 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 doom. I do have uh, some of the issues that made this up. I actually started reading this years and years ago when it first started coming out, and uh, now actually uh, I'm going to be able actually to finish it off. So Jason, you're listening, and I know you're listening. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to be reading this this weekend, and man, I'm so happy you got it all in one great little book. It's just. Too bad I didn't have it here when you were here there uh, earlier this summer. Could have gotten you to sign it for me. But of course, we'll have you back sometime. Anyway, uh, Jason Lutz, Berlin. Highly, highly, highly recommended. I love black and white artwork, of course. He's a great little style to him, too. I love his, uh, it's a neat strip back style. And we, uh, as a matter of fact, I should shared the stage here with Jason back in uh, June was it June or July? June uh, here in St. John's, Newfoundland we were doing a Warren Comics uh, exhibition with uh, Scott Chandler, myself Jason Lutz Paul uh, Tucker uh, even uh, Joe Sacco had a few pieces in it and Miriam Captain so uh, yeah, it was a great time, and uh, I got to see some of his artwork, and actually had a grand chat with him too. We actually, uh, from the opening night of the exhibition, uh, myself and Paul, Paul Tucker, best known for Ted from IDW, uh, we walked from uh, the uh, from the exhibition to our friend Nancy's house. Hello, Nancy, and uh, great person, and uh, got to hang out and have a chat with him, and we had a grand. Grand time, grand time, and I think he did too. So, so of course, Jason, we can't wait to have you back. And so glad that you got that book out. And everyone, run out and buy it now, <coughs> or else I'll disown y'all. Just joking. Well, not really. Get out there and buy it. Anyway, oh, it's taking a lot out of me that that review. <laughs> no, uh, please get out and, and help out good old Jason by buying a quality piece of graphic literature. Now, second up here tonight is Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. And this thing you could beat someone to death with it. It's it weighs a ton. Now, I bought this even though I had <coughs> the uh, 
absolute editions for uh, uh, the Halloween special and some of those, but there was, I think there was one story in this that I didn't have. And uh, so I decided, well, okay, I just might as well get it just to be, that's the completionist in me being a tool. <laughs> Come on, boys, you gotta have it. And not only that, but when I seen it and seen the cool cover, I've been a big, a big friend of, a fan of Tim Sal for, oh, for, ever since I first seen him on, I guess it was, uh, the earliest I can remember seeing him would have been the Challengers of the Unknown, I guess. And, uh, but I, lo I love his, uh, the stuff the, the, the boys do together, absolutely amazing. Um, as a matter of fact, let's take off this dust jacket here so I can lift this over and show it to you. Here's the dust jacket. Nice back. DC always does such nice books, don't they, hey folks? Great production values. Thank you, DC. Oh, and so let's have a look here at Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. I mean, these guys, these guys know how to do Batman. I think these guys, aside from Azzarello and Rizzo when they did that uh, Wednesday Comics thing, and uh, aside from uh, Miller, I think these guys are some of the did some of the best darn Batman to come out in years. I loved all their their pieces. Like I say, I just had to have it. Look at this chaka block. And this thing weighs a ton too. I mean, I can feel it already. Ugh. I can feel my tendons snapping and everything falling apart. But a uh, beautiful little book from DC Comics. So, highly, highly recommend it. I love Salesworth. There's just something, he's one of those perfect, uh, one of those perfect uh, artists who can draw in such a simplified, style that he can just express so much in a line it just it just amazes me I always tell my students that if you can do a drawing say if you did a drawing of Batman same drawing same drawing think about this now and you did it with 200 lines let's just take a guess 200 lines yet you were able to turn around and then draw that same Batman with say 10 lines and look just the same was just as good those 10 lines, if they're as powerful as 200 lines, those 10 lines are better. So, and that's the purpose of art, to evolve, to get that to the point where less really is more. As a matter of fact, even myself, when I'm drawing, I find, uh, uh, compared to when I was younger and I was adding in all kinds of detail and this and this and this, these days, a lot of times when I'm drawing, there's stuff that I may have even drawn in the pencil version but when it comes time for the finished pencil and then, of course, the ink version, I'm after taking out a lot of the artwork. And while I was talking about that, I happened to unwrap another book here. This one, another little omnibus. This one is Earth X Trilogy. Now, everyone, ugh, let's take the, oh yeah, nice little uh, cover with a graphic on it. Look at this. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Um, I can remember when this came out too. Um, actually, I didn't mind this, you know. Uh, although, myself and most people tend to like the to like the first series the best. Um, Universe X and some of those other ones, I find a lot of people aren't, aren't as big on as the, the original one. But, I mean, I'd read it and I kind of liked it, so... When I seen it, of course, coming out, it was just like, well, this is one I don't have, so let's give it a shot. So it's it's more or less, uh, this is more or less um, Marvel's version of Kingdom Come, which of course was a great comic. Pardon me while I touch the sky and have some tea. Gobble, 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 gobble. So, um, so yeah, this was kind of like Marvel's version of it. Like I say, it started out good, but most people, even myself, will will say that the original series was probably about the best, the best of it. And of course, had some great covers by uh, 
by Mr. Ross, and I actually liked, I like this, I like the artwork. There's a simple simplicity to it. It's absolutely wonderful. And as a lot of you know, I mean, I like, I like uh, complicated things, don't get me wrong, I, I do like intricate artwork and all that. But over the years I came to really, the older and older I get, I, I think it's like the simpler and simpler the art I want to see gets. But yeah, looks pretty cool. Now I will give this a read because I've only read actually the first, uh, the first series and all that, so just to see if what everyone says about the rest of it is true, I'll give that a read too. So, that's EarthX Trilogy. Hoo, 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 hoo. Uh, let's toss that one down there. What else do we have here today? Oh yes, oh yeah. From my good buddy, Craig, yo. Hey Craig. From my good buddy Craig comes another one of his ingenious pieces super weird heroes doom 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 I love his stuff I love the back two of the I mean he he he, he, he definitely chan channels the 60s bit of 60s DC here um but yeah he does these great uh, as I've said many times before to me Craig is is like one of the premier uh it's more like a when I re read his collections and all that. It's it's like you're reading or you're looking at a, a finely curated book of comics. It's, it's like seeing a great art show, uh, wonderfully cur curated, and all the great paintings fit together. Whatever the theme is, yada yada yada. And this that's the same I've always found with uh, Craig's books. His uh, his choice of all the different heroes putting them together they somehow they all work uh, it was like his uh, the Nazi one he did there uh, a couple months ago uh, with, uh, with basically a, a lot of the well the anti-nazi thing <laughs> um, and it was great it had like a lot of a lot of modern work in it and all that and just reading through it really gave you that feeling for uh, for the subject um, now with these, of course, love these. Bit of Reed Crandall and all that. The, um, like I say, Super Weird Heroes, of course, it's all in the the, the title, Super Weird Heroes. Preposterous but true, as Craig has here on it. So he has heroes from uh, Hypnox, Twilight and Snoopy, and that's not the dog, Mr. Muscles, The Zebra, Tomboy, Pat Parker, War Nurse, Mr. Whiskers, many many more so uh, let's just have a quick quick glance in here see okay Earmail, Barracuda, the Black Dwarf, Boomerang, the Bouncer, Dollman, I always liked Dollman actually the Eye so like I say these and it's funny cause, and I've said it before uh, when I was when I was a young kid I was I just couldn't get the golden age and to me it was just like oh these people are Terrible artists, just you know, they can't draw as good as today's artists. Blah 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 blah. Uh, but as I got older, I began to gain an, an basically an appreciation for a lot of the older stuff, and it's it's because of actually it's because of people like Craig and the type of books that he puts out that have actually really stoked my love for the golden age of comics. Good old golden age. Here we go, folks. Let's have a quick look through here. Like I say, farly curated. The Lone Warrior. I love some of the names. Mother Hubbard. Mr. Whiskers. That's one of my favorite. Music Master. The Pied Piper. Where does it end? <laughs> Rackman. The Scarab. Sparkman. Spider Woman. No relation to Marvel Spider Woman, of course. But um, so yeah, like I say, I love uh, love anything from Yo Books. Make mine Yo. Remember that. And not only, like I say, not only pick up these. Have a look at his catalog. He has some really, really great 
collections out there. Whew. One moment, please. Ready, set. Oh, it takes me back. That's why I love this spinner rack. It takes me back to the to the years as a kid when I bought my comics from something very similar, obviously, to this. Anyway, let's get to this because we're we're eating up time here. Uh, actually, let's let's try a few. Okay, here. Now this is another fine book from. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, been loving these boom books. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, very nice reproduction. Great, uh, great production values here. Uh, very well done, all in all. Uh, so Ross and uh, all you there at uh, Boom Studios, congratulations. Keep up the great work. Um, but yeah, it's 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 kind of neat. The uh, be able to have uh, this is why I'm so excited for the Savage Sword of Conan, which is going to be coming out in uh, omnibus form from Marvel Marvel Comics in the new year. Uh, I was a huge fan of all the black and white magazines Marvel put out during the 70s. So, but this one now I didn't read the uh, the Planet of the Apes, but people have said you should give it a try. So I'm giving it a try. So thank you, uh, Ross and the boys, and uh, here's a quick look. Oh, look at this. Alfredo El Alcala. Great artwork in, in all the magazines, right? Let me dig this, man. Dig it. Are you digging it? Can you dig it? Can you? Are you digging it now? Are you grooving on the graphics? Are you... Converging on the comics? Are you contemplating the comics? So, check it out. Make sure you buy that one. Another good one. Oh, oh. Okay, we're coming close to the end here. Give me a second now to have another cup of tea. Well, not a cup of tea. Another sip. Another sip of tea. Now, oh, here's something else from my childhood. Well, not my childhood from when I was 16 years old. As you've heard me talk many times about how heavy metal, when it came out in 77, it ripped our little artist brains apart and made us look in whole new directions. Uh, and as people like Drury and uh, Mobius and all, all them who made us realize that we were right when we thought, even as, as young teens, we thought of comics, myself and my friend Jerry, when we were doing comics together, we thought of comics as art. And heavy metal was the proof to us. Uh, not that we need a proof, we knew we were right. <laughs> but I mean, um, absolutely insane art. Right, check this out. I mean, come on. And the other thing, too, about a, lo a lot of this art you see from, uh, from Dr Drouillet and some of these other people, I like showing it to some of my students, too, just because it's so different. And that. I mean panels like like this there look at that I mean that's all hand drawn too even when he'd do concentric circles and all kinds of cool design work like this there none of that is done with that's all done by hand that's what was so cool that they back in the 70s we were able to do cool effects and stuff like that by hand he did, Drouillet didn't need no Photoshop. And this, I'll always forget, the, I'll always remember this herb. This was produced in, uh, I think this was in black and white when it was in, uh, when it was in heavy metal. I seem to remember it that way. I mean, look at this. Come on. I mean, really? Look at that. I mean, that is just absolutely mind-blowing. And this is all done with ruler, pencils, pen, and imagination. Look at that. I mean, those circles. People think, oh, great circles. Done by illustrator. No. It's all done by hand. So, 
another big favorite of mine, Yigrel Erm Erm the Mad from Julier. One of my favorites. Whew. Starting to lose it here. Melting! Melting! Okay. One of the last new books, at least for uh, today. This is the Moon Knight Collection. I had a lot of people who uh, recommended it, this to me. Of course, it being written by Jeff Lemire. A lot of people thought uh, that I should pick it up. And so a lot of times I'll, I'll listen to uh, recommendations from friends of mine, stuff like that. And uh, I'll give it a go, depending on... Uh, Depending on a recommendation. So this this looks pretty good. Let's see. It's uh, it's Lemire and Smallwood, Stephen Grant artists, Jake Lockley artist, Francesco, and this was apparently he, uh, he had other people who helped him draw it, and they would draw certain characters, I guess, or certain scenes, or. But anyway. It, it sounded cool whenever they, they mentioned it to me, so it was just like, i got to check this out. So it's Smallwood and then a few other artists who do some other scenes in there, because you can see a Franco, Franco, Franco Villa. There we go, like that. See? Pretty darn cool, eh? So yeah, it looks, it looks good and anything, I can say usually anything from Jeff Lemire, it's well worth it. Okay, well that's that was a nice pile of, uh, of new books there this week. Actually, I have one more book left, and this is not a new book, this is an old book, but this was something uh, that a friend of mine, uh, Sam Johnson, when he was up to the Fan Expo, uh, uh, that he was able to pick up for me, that I've been looking for for a long time, Young Gods and Friends by Barry Windsor Smith. So a lot of you out there know that I'm a big Barry Windsor Smith fan, and uh, I just had to have this. I'd, I'd seen it for sale for different prices online and stuff like that, but he got it for a decent price for me, and uh, I love Barry Windsor Smith. Surely, technically one of the most perfect artists in comics today. Technically, there's, I don't think there's anyone quite quite as beautiful as good old Barry W. Smith. So yeah, pretty darn cool, hey eh, folks? So overall, a great week for, uh, for myself for comics. Ugh. I'm about to take a, a break here now. Cup of tea and then uh, finish my cup of tea and uh, post this video and uh, then I'll take the rest of the day off. So, um, any other news? Yes, um, uh, I myself, I'm going to be planning a uh, festival of graphic literature. Shh, but it's a secret. I'll tell you more about that in the weeks to come. Anyway, that being said, I'm dying from the heat here. And I'm dying to sit down and just watch some Jeopardy. Yes, Jeopardy. Yeah, Jeopardy. Nope, you're wrong. <laughs> anyway, folks, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your uh, kind consideration and attention. And we'll see you next week in the library. Bye. Oh, my God. The boom tube. Whoa!